What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gaming with the Bros Cast, episode 162. My name is Harrison. I am joined by my brother Nick. As always, Nick, how are you doing? You're all hyped up over there. <laughs> I'm always hyped. Always, always hyped. hyped. Mondays, man. Always, man. I'm doing good. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting couple of days. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news, but uh, we had the, the 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 bank crash, Silicon Valley Bank. It completely crashed, and the FDIC had to step in, and essentially, like, there was a point where like people were just going to lose their money. Jeez. Um, and 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 the reason it affects me is because I I work in that industry, so. It was impacting a few of like my my clients. Yeah. Um, so it was a mess last week. Dang. And it's continuing to be a mess this week as it is impacting other banks too that that our clients also bank with. So. Huh. Um, Where is this bank located at? Uh, it's in it's in California. Is it is it just a California based bank or is it? Uh, I, I want to say they have like other other locations, but they. But they're they're primarily geared toward like venture backs, okay, um, companies and private equity firms and all that stuff. So okay, yeah. Well, I have not been keeping up with that, but <laughs> apparently it's like the worst, uh, the worst uh, banking crash since the financial crisis back in two thousand eight. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Been interesting. Been. It's been kind of a shit show. Yeah. For the past few days, but we'll see what happens. Hmm. Did you have to did you have to work on the weekend because of that? Or No. No. No, not really. Okay. I, I, I turned my computer off on Friday and I said, Whatever happens this weekend happens this weekend. Yeah. And luckily the the government came out and said that everyone's money was probably going to be fine and never going to be able to pull out their funds. Probably going to be fine. On Monday. No, That's... They, said that. they said, like, oh, your, your, your money is, like, backed up and you're, you're going to be okay. You'll be able to move your money out of your out of your bank accounts on, on Monday. And, of course, everyone's trying to do that, so it's slowing down all the systems. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then, and then it's, like, a ripple effect where any similar banks, like, for any similar banks... Um, people are also pulling their money out yeah. just out of precaution and that's causing their uh cash flows to go down which is just making it even worse so yeah that's that's the problem with that stuff it's a snowball effect yeah it's like the ripple of like hey like you should i, I pulled my money out you should pull your money out just to be safe and then, so let's all put our our money under our mattresses again like the good old days <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah but uh other than that Pretty pretty good week. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, not bad. How, how you doing? Sweet. I'm I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm feeling better. Last um, versus last week, uh, missed. I ended up missing a day last week. Um, just a real bad cough uh, that could really continue on until about Friday, and I started feeling a lot better. Um, still got a little bit of a, a little bit of a cough, but it's it's pretty much gone. Um, He's back. Yeah, I'm back, baby. You know. Um, other than that, we just uh. You no, know, another another standard work week. It felt like, uh, dude, my weeks always just fly by. Like it's if it's, it's, I don't know if it's because I'm working from home or I mean that's probably the case, but it just it just flies by, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, it's nice. Uh, we so we attempted again to go bowling at the same spot. Um, which, well, actually no, we we tried to go to a different spot, but it's not necessarily my fault. Uh. Brittany got hung up at work on Saturday, so she got off a little bit later than intended. <clears throat> so we didn't get there until like around like eight o'clock. And by that time, it was it was packed. And they ha- they have a thing called cosmic bowling, which is just yeah. like for those that don't know, like they turn the lights off and everything's like glow in the dark. So they'd already been booked up for that. Um, so we, we ended up going to the same bowling alley we went to my birthday last weekend, uh, and we just did like arcade stuff. Uh, and we put our reservations in for bowling, but the time it was ready, it was like ten thirty. So I, I was like, "Let's just, we'll we'll just try again." Like it's already late. We had all the kids out and stuff. Like we were we were tired and stuff like that. So we still had a good time. We we went to the like did the, the they have a pretty big arcade. So 
um, just did a bunch of arcade games and stuff like that. So it was it was fun. Nice. It was fun. But yeah, yeah. You, you'll get it next week. Yeah, I, I, well, I don't think we're gonna try again next week, but we're, we're just gonna keep it keep it easy next week. But we'll, we'll take them eventually. I mean, we got yeah. we got all summer, so I'm not necessarily worried about it. But um, but yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, played, some, played some games here and there, but uh, Nick, we, we gotta talk about this Last of Us. Should we should we talk about it? I mean, should we? I mean, we yeah. I mean, we don't need to. Let's just stop here. Let's, let's not even talk about the last episode. So yeah, um, I let's talk about the episode, of course, and then we'll kind of give our opinions on the season as a whole, um, and maybe maybe some improvements we want to see until next season, all that good stuff. But Nick, episode nine, the season finale, I felt like the shortest episode of the. I think it was. I think yeah, I think it was. How did you feel about it? I thought it, I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was incredible. The the opening scene with with Ellie's mom. Was yeah. Really well done, like. That that none of that was in the game, right? I don't I don't think they ever they ever brought up Ellie's parents again, and they also I don't think they ever gave a reason why she was immune, right? No, I don't think they Is that did. Why she was immune? It's because her mom got bit. Right as she was having the baby, is that is that kind of the implication? For my my understanding, I mean I know that like the stem cell, like all that stuff, is like super. Um, useful in like the medical industry um, obviously comes from babies and stuff like that and and, and uh, so it's super controversial but I think it had something to do with that I think she got bit it spread into like the umbilical cord and, and reached Ellie and then she cut it in which also I was like why are you using the knife that you just stabbed the infected with to cut the umbilical cord oh, I didn't even think about that but I, I think I think the bite like I don't know. Um, I don't know if it even spreads that fast. So, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe she used a knife. Maybe that was the, the real reason why and had, like, her blood on there. Who knows? But uh, that's that's the idea I got. Because, like, in the show, it, it explains... And, again, full spoilers for this whole episode and uh, the entire season of The, the Last of Us. But, uh, yeah, that's my understanding is that the cordyceps was in her the entire time, right? Like, it's... it was in her brain but for whatever reason it didn't cause her to transform and it also i guess told whenever whenever she got bit again that she had already had the cordyceps in her right is that is that my am i understanding that, that correct that sounds right yeah it, it's already in her system because Mar marlene said it was like in her brain which i mean they, they said that in her in the in the, the game too but that's my understanding is she had it the whole the whole time, but for whatever reason, it didn't trigger her to transform and lose her lose her mind. And maybe maybe it had something to do with like the stem cells and the umbilical cord. I, you know, I don't. They didn't really go that deep into it. Yeah, but you could kind of infer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the reason for it. I but yeah, that was cool. That was that was a great like that was great context to the episode. I think it added a lot of weight to to ellie as a character yeah like going into this very intense episode like it and from there like when it when it switches back to to joel and ellie um you kind of immediately see the weight of of episode eight. Oh yeah it's all of her with um with David. <clears throat> yeah yeah because because now you know joel is full-on dad mode and, and accepted her as his own and he's trying to talk to her the entire time and and just there they just did like a 180 of each other and she's the quiet one and he's the the talkative one um but yeah I, you know i really i forgot that ashley johnson was going to be in the, the the show until she pulled up and i was like i was like what her voice sounds so i was like holy crap it's ellie <laughs> it, kinda, it really did sound like it sound like ellie yeah like it, she's um I, I listened to the companion uh podcast this morning um and uh, they were talking about how um, uh, Craig was talking about how uh, Troy Baker is like a man of like many voices. Like he you, he doesn't sound like Joel when he's speaking normally. But Ashley Johnson, like you could just straight up tell yeah. that she's Ellie. Like she was like cussing on the uh, on the podcast. And I was like, dude, that's that's just Ellie, man. This is weird. But um, but, but yeah, I thought she I thought she did a, a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, it was it was it was intense. That that whole moment was intense. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a way for her to like. I mean, obviously, we don't know the future of like the game franchise, but that was kind of like I felt like a way of her handing off the mantle to um, Bella Ramsey as Ellie going yeah. forward, which I thought was really cool. But a lot of really cool tie-ins. Yeah. With the voice actors, I, th- I think that was re- like very well done. Every every major character in in the game had some sort of a part. Yeah. In the show. Yeah, I, I think that's where like just the difference of this show versus any other video game ad- adaptation is obviously Neil Druckmann is heavily involved in producing the, the show, but you could just tell the care and love that went into this episode, you know, this whole series and just, yeah, bringing all these, all the talent in from the game like, and having them incorporated it into the, into the show was awesome. And like no other game adaptation outside of like uncharted, they had, you know, they had, um, uh, Nolan North, you know, on the on the beach or whatever, which was which was a cool moment. But yeah, uh, you know, no other game does that. So I think that's you know, they, they just really took care of like all their talent and stuff like that, and gave them the, a way to be incorporated into the to the main series. They did obviously yeah. killed them off immediately as soon as they enter the show. But <laughs> none of them lasted very long. I'll tell you no. <laughs> uh, and then the, the like the, the famous draft scene. Yeah, that was cool. That was that was a very like a very sweet moment. I couldn't tell at first if it was like a CGI draft or a regular. They they draft. confirmed it was real. They confirmed yeah, it was yeah, a real right. draft. The, the backdrop was definitely CGI or, or green screen. But uh, I I because I was wondering the same thing and, until the giraffe like tongue came out and grabbed like a little plant and I was like I think that's real. real. Yeah, I think that's real. But yeah, that that, that moment. I mean. I, I really thought that they were going to deviate a lot more in the show. And that's what, like, all the, the reviewers were kind of saying. But they really... They really didn't. They really stuck to the, most of the major moments in, in the game, which which was great. I mean, I thought all those moments, like, it didn't feel like it was, like, rehashed or anything like that. It felt, it felt just as cool to see it. It meant mu- just as much yeah. watching on the show than it did the game. So I thought that was a really touching moment too, even like the whole ladder point. You know when they're, when she's like when she drops the ladder and she runs away. Like yeah. it, everything was like one for one, just about. Hey, are we live? We're not live on Twitch. We're not live on Twitch. Yeah. No more Twitch. I. That was just not working. Yeah, I couldn't get it to. I couldn't get restream to work on both. Oh, okay. So we're right, <laughs> just on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that ladder moment was funny. That yeah. gave me a chuckle. I, I nudged Alicia. I was like, that, that, that's, that's the game. That's the that's, game. That's the game. That's the game. That's the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then after that, man, like, as soon as Joel started talking about Sarah, I was just like, tears in the eyes, man. Because I thought that was just such oh a gosh. such a heartfelt moment. And, you know, she, he, he, you know, he's telling her about, he's telling Ellie about Sarah and then, what what does he say? Um, she, she says time time heals all wounds, and he said, "What did he, what did he say?" I can't remember exactly what he said, but he I basically just said like it wasn't it, it wasn't, wasn't time. time. Yeah, which inferred that it was it was her. Yeah. So yeah, just a wow. super both, super touching moment. Both of their looks they gave each other were perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's such a good moment. Yeah, and then and then like they're both like so non. Non-confrontational, Com- yeah, like non, like non-emotionally confrontational. That they didn't like say, "Oh, you know, I love you" or whatever. Um, it was just a, you know, they they understood that moment, and then, you know, Joel's like, "I, you know, tell me, tell me a, a shitty pun joke." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that 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 moment was just was incredible. I, perfect. yeah, it was it was perfect, and I couldn't remember if they had something like that in the game or not. I I don't think they did. But I could be misremembering. Yeah. I want to go back and play it. I did. I wish I would have played it as the the show went on, but I just I just didn't have time to to do that. But yeah, I think I might go back and play it um, at some point. Might pick up the PS5 version. Don't don't do it, Nate. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. 
I'd, I would pick it up if it was like 30 bucks, man. Yeah, I maybe mean, I'll, I'll wait until it goes on sale. But Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and then then it goes to then it goes to hell. They they get yeah smoked, they get smoked out. Joel gets beat up, wakes up in the hospital, and Ellie's being prepped for surgery. Marlene comes in and yeah tells him that uh they they essentially have to kill Ellie to to like e- extract the the cordyceps or whatever. Yeah. yeah, so they can test it. And yeah, it just kind of shows like. Here. Marlene, like I, you get it. Like that—that's the whole conversation back, you know, ten years ago when this game first came out. And I'm sure a lot of people are having this conversation now. Was was Joel right in in his decision? And from like Marlene's perspective, it was kind of shitty. Like you promised, you promised. Uh, what was it, Anna? I think um, the mom. You promised her to keep her alive, and then you don't because the better of mankind. And and by this point, I mean, it's been what, 20 years since the outbreak. I don't know if the world is going to be able to come back from where it's at. So even if they did find a cure, are, are they going to be able to mass produce it enough? Are people going to give up their, I don't know, the, the land they, they created or have now and, and go back to some sort of functioning society you know, um, I don't. I don't think that's possible. And, and and you don't even know if there's going to be a cure or not. Like it's not guaranteed. So. Um, yeah, like how yeah. do you mass produce it? How do you mass? How, how do you um, how do you send it out to people? How do you how yeah. do you do any of that logistically? Yeah, because people aren't going to believe you. Like it's been twenty years. They could they'll think it's like a trap or something. So. Yeah. But yeah, that that moment where he where she tells him and he just snaps. And, and I, I, as a viewer, if like I was Marlene, I'd be like, just kill him right now. Just shoot him and then be done with it. Yeah. Because, you know, he's not going to let it go. He's not going to let it lie. And yeah, they, you know, they escort oh. him down and he, he turns on uh, video game mode. My wife, my wife, pretty. She's like, she's like, this feels like a video game right now. He's just murdering everybody. She even like as soon as he takes out the two guard or the two uh, firefly guys in the in the stairwell. She uh, he like leans down and like checks the body and grabs the clips and stuff. She's like, that's straight out of like a video game. Yeah, straight out of that. Yeah, yeah, it's like looting in that game. Um, and I don't know if you knew this, but and I, and I learned this from um, from the podcast. But uh, the the music that's that's playing in the background this entire time when he's storming the uh, the the pediatric hall, or whatever, um, is the same music that is being played when Joel is carrying Ellie out. Um, of the Firefly headquarters. It's just being used now as like a melancholy backdrop of him having to kill all these people. So I thought that, <coughs> I thought that was really cool. That's yeah, that's interesting. I also thought it was like kind of kind of funny that they that they stuck to like the the sign postage or the signage of the hospital. Like yeah. Like they actually brought her to the pediatric section. Yeah, like that was weird, right? Just set her up like wherever they could. It's like, no, no, she is a child. <laughs> she is a child, and, and therefore all of our stuff <laughs> down here. Yeah, that that was that that was odd. Um, yeah, but what, whatever. I mean, I guess I guess it makes sense. I guess whatever. Uh, but yeah, that just that moment when like after he gets he gets the gun and he's just stone faced like he's just just cold berserk like no emotion uh, like even the one guy that like puts his gun down he's like nah takes him out just brutal you kind of see it in the previous episode when he's like torturing those two people oh yeah yeah how kind of relentless he is and yeah he's just like he's a scary dude man i would not want to come across i would not want to be on his bad side uh in the apocalypse doesn't leave anything to chance either he's like i'm not no. going to live no yeah you're gonna, you're gonna come back later and he does the same thing to Marlene. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she, she gives up. She says, you know, let me go. And he's like, no, you'll just, you'll come after me. You'll always come after her and you couldn't take that chance. So yeah. And then, um, obviously we get the scene with, uh, with, uh, Abby's father <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for, for the next, uh, Don't next do game. <laughs> yeah. I saw, I saw the TikTok of like the, um, the, the, what, what is it? The, um, oh my gosh. 
Interstellar, where like the moment where Matthew McConaughey is like, yeah, yeah, don't it, like it's like that. But oh god, I, I guess not to not to spoil spoil too much about um, the second game, but yeah, yeah, we won't we won't spoil what happens, but um, but yeah, and um, Laura Laura Bailey, yeah, plays one of the one of the nurses in the room. Oh, does she? Okay, I didn't I didn't notice that. The, yeah, the voice of Abby. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's apparently there's a there's a part that if you there whenever um, Joel is making his way to the hospital, there's a slight blur on screen of someone running by and it's someone with a braid. So people are thinking that's that's Abby and the in the hospital. Right. It's like a she very yeah. it's like a very quick second that you I mean, I didn't even notice it when I wasn't and until I went on Twitter and, and saw it. And I was like, wow, that's dude, they did such a good job of like just sneaking stuff in. Um, yeah, her yeah. and um, uh, Dina. Yeah, Dina, oh. Dina was in. Yeah, she was in there for like two seconds. What's up, Point Break? Um, right. Yeah, yeah, sneaking in Dina for like, yeah, for like a second or so. Yeah. But yeah. They're setting it up. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. and then, and then, um, we get we get that big moment, and I was wondering if they were gonna like have the cutoff like they did in the game, and they they did exactly as they did in the game, and I thought it was just as brilliant ten years ago as it is now. Yeah, it was it was perfectly executed. It was impactful. It, I I, like, I, I want to talk to my friends who have who've never played the game. But, yeah, like, or watching the show and see what they think, because it is like it's a very divisive ending. It is, yeah, and. I mean, depending on like what side you fall on, like I feel like a lot of, a lot of like parents would fall on the side of, uh, like you're gonna protect your kid. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Second thought, and, that, and, and I agree with that. And yeah, I, I would do the same. And then you have your people who, who are like, well, you we gotta think about the greater good, and you have to think about what it could mean for the world. Yeah. Like neither neither one of those opinions is wrong. It's just yeah, yeah, neither are wrong. Priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, again, like referring, you know, going back to the state of the world and if they even could develop a cure, you know, who wants it? You have all these crazy people out here that have have 20 years of just violence and and cannibalism and, and all this other stuff that I, I don't know if the world can come back from that. You probably couldn't get back. So, I mean, on, on one hand, yeah, as a as a parent, there, yeah, there's there's no there's no second thought. Um, but also, like, if you were in those shoes where you're with this person for six or seven, like, I don't know the, the exact time span, but I mean, it was a long time. It was like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was a year, but it was like under a year at least um, that you're with this person. And then they're going to say, hey, we're going to kill her. Like, what do you've, you can you live with that? I mean, maybe you can if, if you think it's for the greater good. And I, I don't think like. I don't think neither one of them had that thought that she was going to die. Be- you know, they, they thought they probably thought we we're going to get blood work. We we're going to figure out a way to synthesize, you know, synthesize a cure, and then we'll be good to go. You know, I don't think they yeah, thought they were going to die. At that point, it kind of feels hopeless because, like, well, what was all before? He was he was delivering her to her to her grave. Yeah. When you think about it that way, and I'm just, I'm, I'm sure like the, the thought process is is you know. I, there's no way I'm going to let that happen at this point. I don't care yeah. if if they can save everybody in the world. I'm not gonna not gonna lose another child again. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think my I think just the main gripes I have with the show is I think I wish it was a little bit longer. I wish we got. I don't I don't want to say it's forced, but I I wish. Like I don't know. It's like the end of the end of episode eight. Joel's on board. I wish we had a little bit more time with them together. I mean, obviously they've been bonding this entire time, but I wish we had just a little bit more of bonding time as they've like fully accepted their kind of roles to each other and that they need each other. Um, yeah, you almost need like a filler episode. Yeah, <laughs> just traveling. Yeah, so, something like that. I, I don't know or. I don't know. Maybe maybe throw in like an infected episode in or something where where they're the main threat. But and then that's my second gripe is just more infected. And they've already confirmed they're going to have more. So that's awesome. But yeah, just just more. I mean, again with even with uh, the beginning of this episode, it's just it's just one infected again. 
So that that's only three episodes that had more than one. Yeah. Infected. So cra- that's crazy because I mean, obviously in the game, I mean, you're you're killing hundreds and hundreds by the end of it, and, and it makes sense and in, in the game wise, but uh, yeah, I, I wish there was just a little bit more infected because they're obviously a huge threat and they're like an unstoppable force, and it would have been nice to see them on screen because I thought like the the costume design for them was incredible. Yeah, it was it was stellar. Yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, two, uh, part two, whatever, whatever they do, uh, it has. I mean, it's gonna have more infected because a lot of the a lot a lot of the story beats in that game rely on infected. Yeah, they, they, they come from 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 the infected. Whereas in the first game, it's all the story beats are with the people. Yeah, or with human interaction. Uh, so I, I think we'll see a lot more. Yeah. But, I mean, overall, I thought, I thought the season was so good. I thought it was excellent. I thoroughly enjoyed every episode. Yeah. Even the ones that were a little bit slower, and I can only think of two off the top of my head that are that are kind of lesser yeah. episodes, that being episode four and episode seven. Yep, yep. But I do wish it was longer. I wish it was like a 12-episode season or even just a 10-episode season. Like, it, it needed... It, it needed more more Joel and Ellie. Yeah, or like, and, and I hope that they explore that in season two. Like, maybe we just get like a like a like a one off like side mission style. You know, we gotta do some raids or something. We gotta you know we gotta get you know get some supplies, something like that. Uh, I wish they would. Yeah, I wish they would have had like an episode like that in this. But I mean, it is what it is. But I, it's still the series was still fantastic. Um, yeah. And I can't I can't wait for I can't wait for season two. And whatever they do beyond. That probably won't be like until 2024. 20 yeah, probably. And I, wa- I want to see more like pre apocalypse stuff too. Like that was some of my favorite moments in the, in the show was just with, with a doctor um, talking oh, about yeah, the cordyceps. Yeah. And she said, well, you, you bomb the city. It's, it, it's too late. Let me go home with my family. Like that was so intense. I know. Uh, it was so yeah. good. I guess they only did it for the first two episodes, right? Yeah, it was just the first two. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I thought the whole series was fantastic. I, again, very, very minor complaints. Just I wanted more. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that, that, I mean, that's, a, that's if that's a complaint, a then, complaint. yeah, it's a good complaint to have. And then just, yeah, more infected. More infected next go around. I want to see more on screen because episode five was incredible with how many they put on screen. Yeah, so. it was. Any last thoughts? Can't wait for more. Yeah, can't wait for more. Can't wait for more. Should we uh, switch over before? Yeah, let's go ahead and swap over before we. Um, yeah, before we dive into the games. All right, we are back. Nick, what have um, you been playing a lot this week? I know. <laughs> well, this week. let's uh, let's let's save RE4 for last because I yeah. I cannot wait to talk about that with you. Yes. Um, I'll. I want to hear your thoughts on Halo. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. because so you I haven't you haven't played in a long time, and I've I've been I've been playing a lot, um, even prior to season three. So I want to hear your thoughts on, on the game. Yeah, so I've only played a handful of matches, but I was able to play the the two new arena maps. Okay. And I loved both of them. I thought yeah. both of them were were fantastic. The the game feels just as good as, as it did at like around launch. Yeah, and that that's that's a really good thing because, like like we've talked about many times, they they've perfected the gameplay. Uh, I didn't get a chance to use the new weapon. I don't think. I I know the 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 commando. Yeah, is on the the map with the floating platforms. I don't think the it, it it's it's there too. It's I think it's when you're running on the bottom tier under like underneath the platforms um that's not like not outside but you know underneath uh, i think it's somewhere in there uh, i can't quite remember but it but it is there it's but but that weapon is on both of those maps okay okay yeah it was mostly up top it's okay like in the middle yeah i yeah, love that I, level dude oh it's so good level and i love the other one too the mm. sniper you yeah kind of pick that up and, and and start picking people up picking people off across the map and mm-hmm yeah, like I really, I, I'm gonna jump into it a lot more this week. Yeah, 
and play some of the the forge maps as well, and then and then jump into uh, to big team battle. Yep. But yeah, man, it, it feels good, dude. It's, it's good, good, man. So I, I don't think they've I don't think they have the forge maps in there yet. Like I didn't I would I didn't get to play the like the the office one, um, the shrunk down one. Uh, I think they'll probably release that. I guess some point later on um, because they have they have like the the new feature playlist that's like associated with the uh the the little 10 tier battle pass um did you did you get the new battle pass i've not purchased it. not okay um so i think they only shuffled the two maps the two new ones on that one and then if you go into like community playlist they have like the other four forge maps that were released prior to the season three so i don't think they've introduced any new forge ones as far as i can tell um have you played the the four? I've, yeah, I played. Yeah, I played the four a while ago, and they're all, they're all pretty good. Um, but these these two new ones that are the, the two arena ones are, are, are fantastic. Um, I've only I've only played Escalation Slayer once. They don't they don't have a playlist for it, which is kind of a bummer. Annoying. And and again, yeah. like I don't know why they don't just separate it. It's like it's it's a little infuriating sometimes because like that was so much fun. Uh, like starting with a rocket launcher and ending with the skull. Like it was such a you, fun. You start, you start strong and end. Yeah. In week. That's cool. Yeah. That's it's really, really it's cool. really, really cool. Um, and you, have you had, have you used the new shroud, um, pickup yet? Yeah, I did use the new shroud pickup. That one's awesome. Dude, the best thing, cause you can, I, I didn't realize it at first, but you can launch it like, like the, um, Oh, you can. Yeah. Like the, you don't have to put it at your feet. You can launch it across the map. So my favorite thing to do was you get the gravity hammer and you launch it at people, especially if you're playing like um, uh, King of the Hill or something like that. Mm-hmm. Launch it into the hill while people are there and they don't see you coming because their map doesn't work anymore. And you just run into that thing and slam it down. Oh, it's so good, dude. So much fun. But yeah, oh, man, we, need, we need to get some clips going again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a, I've got a couple. I've had a couple of rev- revving to go. Couple, a couple in chamber. Yeah, but we'll, we'll have to play because yeah, it's it's um yeah. it's a lot of fun. It's it's yeah. great. It, it feels good. I, I've I haven't seen anything negative really from Halo, um. So I feel like it's yeah, it's thing. yeah it's on the up and up. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, if you want to play this week, just send me a text. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably play. I'll probably play tomorrow night at some point. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, tell me about uh, Metroid. Yeah, so I uh, replayed Metroid Fusion. Went through. It's, it's a short game. You beat the whole game. Dude, what the hell? I still got to be Prime. It's shorter than Dread. Okay. So, okay, my 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 clear time's at three and a half hours. Oh, geez, okay. That's super short I then. I think that's true. I, I think it took me longer than that because I I played it in like a couple of sessions. Um, it may not count like when you pause it to go into the map. Yeah, my, yeah, I don't think it does count it actually when you pause. I did a decent amount of that. Um yeah, this game is like this game is really incredible. The save states really help with this game because some of the bosses are pretty hard, and then yeah. there's a couple of like annoyingly long run-ups to some of the bosses. Okay. And then there's a two-parter last boss where you fight one, and then you have to go to another section and and fight the final boss. And there's no saves in between that. So like when oh, I on, the, on the 3ds a few years ago, it was like. It was infuriating because it was because the first fight was really difficult. Yeah. And then you're left with, you know, not a lot of time. It's like it's like time based as well, so it's it's pretty hard. But the save states help out a lot. Um, okay, I'll have to remember that. Like, ah, it's like a horror game. Well, that's I was reading the I was reading the um, I don't I don't know the the information about the game and they they worded it like it was like this horror game which i mean dread is kind of like a horror game too i mean in a, in a way with, yeah. the, with the the emmys that's, that, that's it's kind of similar because there's the the sax which is the yeah um the, the x that is pretty much copied samus yeah and it's it's kind of stalking you throughout the game okay and you know it's it, it can't show up at random but there's there are specific periods where it shows up and you just have to run away Wow. And okay. Like really, I mean, she's like really powerful, fully upgraded, uh, and it gets pretty intense. Not gonna lie. Okay. Sweet. It's a great, great world building, a really great story, but it is it is very different. 
from from the other Metroid games because there's like a lot of exposition, yeah, and <clears throat> a lot of story beats, and 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 Samus actually talks or has like an inner monologue, right? On. Like okay, she's riding up an elevator or something. That's cool. Yeah, it's a. It's a oh, it's on it's on my list to play. I've just got I got finished oh, so much stuff, so and you, you haven't finished Prime yet, dude. Whoa, long man, it, it's taken over. No, you gotta finish Prime. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. He's done for. He's done. No, no, I, I'll, I'll beat it this week. I'm, 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 I'm close. I'm close. You're close. Have you played any more since last week? I have not. Dang. I haven't oh. been like I've, I've been so busy on the weekends here recently that I just haven't had time to sit down and really like grind out a, a gaming session. <clears throat> but but you have enough. But you have enough time for what long? Okay. Yeah, it's just it's, it's fun, different. man. I know it's different. It's different. Yeah, uh, I guess let's talk about Wolong. So yeah, yeah, last last weekend, I was a little bit salty on it. I, a little bit poo poo on it. I, I was I was poo pooed that that first boss was just kicking my ass, and I I just the next day I I, I played. I sat down. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me just try again. And I I I did not go the um aggressive route. I kind of just deflected and I def- and I did it like three times in a row and I was like hey I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling good and I did it again and I did it again. and then I died and then like two tries later I beat it and I and I got and I got the um because I got it like halfway down because after you get it like halfway down on the second phase like you'll get to use the the ability yeah. um, but the first time I got it halfway down I did not have that ability yet or it wouldn't it wouldn't yeah, trigger for me, me <clears throat> which was a little frustrating because I knew it would happen um, but yeah, once once I learn, I, I would like to fight that boss again now that I've like not mastered deflecting, but I'm a lot better at it. Um, I'd be interested to see how I do. But yeah, I think I'm on um, I think I'm on like the third or fourth area now. So I've beaten I've beaten quite a few bosses, um, all all different. Uh, the one the most recent one I beat was like the 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 guy that has like the flame, like the the fire abilities. Have you gotten I don't know if you've gotten that far. No, I've only I've only just gotten past the second boss. Okay, okay. So yeah, I'm I'm at an area where uh he's like he's a wizard, I guess. Um but he's called like not wizard of like the earth, but it's like something of like the earth, which is confusing because he throws fireballs. Um so and I know like metal is supposed to be the counteract for earth in this game. But I was just throwing like water spells at it and it was kind of it was stopping his fire abilities. So it was weird. I, I didn't really understand you that. Counter spells? I don't think I've gone. Well, not counter. Like he he does this move where he does like three waves of like a fire flame at you, yeah. and if you if you're fast enough and you and you shoot the like the water spell at him, it'll stun him and he won't be able to use it. Oh. But but I used I have used a different spell like the, one of the metal spells and it didn't do anything. So I. It made sense because it's fire versus water, but like he's called Earth Wizard or whatever. He's not. It's not a wizard, but he's Earth whatever. Oh, but he's not really an Earth. I got. I don't know. It's. It was really confusing, but I ended up beating him, and it was a really cool boss fight. Uh, but yeah, you can you can totally counter magic in this game. Like I was coming up. I don't know if you've gotten to this area yet, but I was coming up on this cliff, and there was this wizard or shaman that that shot like this this like ball of energy at me and I just hit deflect and he spun around on a sword and threw it back at him and it was like an instant kill it was it was awesome it's cool yeah it was super cool um so yeah I'm I'm really I'm really liking this game um now um it's it's I mean yeah it's very much like a like a Dark Souls s game but it's very very compact like it's it's different like small areas you're going to where you can um you're going through and then you're you're figuring out the final you go get to the final boss of the area and then you there's like a cutscene and then it takes you to the new area uh but within each area there's different battle flags where you can rest but then there's also these fortitude flags that you can find that you can increase your fortitude that way you know if you start out at like zero you know you might the boss might end up being a 10 and you die and you go back to five but if but if you find the fortitude flags you can get it all the way up to like 10 or something i know that might be a, sound a little confusing if you haven't played it but it locks in your level so you don't you don't lose anything which is really cool so you can't uh, lose anything beyond that yeah yep yeah. okay yeah so you could i mean you, the, if you kill enough enemies prior like before getting to the boss and you're 
like at a 20, like I don't know, a 22, but your fortitude flag is set at 18, you can only lose four levels or four fortitude. Okay, because so, yeah, you were having you were you were confused about that when you first started. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you kept losing or kept going back down to 10 or something. I'm still confused about like why I gained so much fortitude when I went into the one boss fight like with, the, with yeah, that same and then it dropped me down and then it slowly dropped me down. Uh, I'm still a little confused on why it, it like doubled my fortitude, but I, I I don't know why I did that. But um, but yeah, it, it just it, that encourages you to explore, and it's still like Dark Souls esque where you're you're coming back onto your you know your old areas and um like kicking yeah. down ladders and stuff like that. So all that's still in there. It's just a lot smaller of experience. It's a lot smaller than even Dark Souls like three. Um, the maps just aren't as big, but it's also kind of refreshing because you can just you know do your thing, get in there and. You can kind of get yeah. through an area in 10 minutes, right? Like, it's pretty, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. I mean, it encourages you to obviously kill enemies and explore and find the, the fortitude flags. Um, I don't know if they're actually called that, but um, that way you, it makes the, the boss fight a little bit easier going into it. But, yeah, I mean, all the boss fights are pretty pretty unique so far. So, yeah, I'm liking have it. Have any of them been harder than the first boss? I have not. They have not been hard, and that and that's still my my gripe with the game, and not necessarily because it's a hard boss. It's just I think it's a little bit too much. Like I understand that the boss is perfect to learn that you have to deflect in order to do anything in this game, but again, someone who maybe doesn't play Souls games like we do, and we are kind of used to like these really hard bosses and just you know. It's just fighting him, and fighting him over and over again until you until you get it. Um, the average player or someone who's new to this genre, I think it's just going to bounce off super quick, and I, I think that's a mistake. Especially with it being on Game Pass and it's f- essentially free to play. Someone will be, oh, this is a cool game, but then after that first boss, they're going to be like, ah, oh, this is this is too much, and bounce and off. You have bad word of mouth. Exactly. Yeah. So Harrison, do you think this is gonna? Do you think this is going to make you better at Sekiro? That's what I was thinking. I was like, man, I should go back to Sekiro. But I was like, I'm not going to do that to myself right now. Yeah, they, they might be, like, just different enough where you're still having to relearn something. Yeah. Or, like, relearn the controls. I don't know. And, but FYI, I was I was playing, and I had equipped a new um, piece of equipment. And all of a sudden, I couldn't deflect anymore. And I was like, what is this? What, what is going on? Uh, and I looked it up, and turns out if you have... If you're over encumbered, you can't deflect. Yeah. yeah. So keep that in mind. If if you go over 100 percent of your of your weight um, that you can carry uh, or equip, um, it'll it won't let you deflect. And I was like, what? I was like, why am I all of a sudden really bad at this game? Like I'm sitting here deflecting, and then I was noticing that he's just rolling, but he's not fat rolling. He's just rolling, but not deflecting. And I was like, okay, let me let me switch that up. But yeah, I, I'm still I'm really liking it. I yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I stuck with it and was able to get to the first boss because it, it's it's really fun. It's really fun. Yeah, it's a it's a great time. I, I I ended up beating the first boss with the slower weapon. I, I don't know which one you ended up going with, but I know you said you tried that one and you, did, you didn't like it. Yeah, I think I, I think I stuck out with a sword, but now now that I've beaten that first boss, I have like these two halberds, like these two like it's like a dual um, handed weapon. So I've got that now, and that that's been working out really well. But yeah, it's it's I like it, I like it a lot. Yeah, need to need to jump into it more this week. Once I get off of my little Resident Evil kick that I'm in right now. Hey man, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but, but yeah, before we jump into the the Resident Evil Four demo, I, I jumped into Village, checked out the third person mode. Okay. And got through, uh, got through the area like where you meet up with everybody, and then. And then the house burns down. Remember that area? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Okay. So, yeah, I got through that. And I was like, wait, there's a DLC. What am I doing? So <laughs> I, I jumped out and I started that. Oh, you started yeah. the Shadow of Rose DLC? Yeah, I started the Shadow Did, of Rose. You didn't pay for it, right? Because I have it. No, I didn't pay for it. Okay, cool, it, cool. It came, yeah, it was like, when I went to re-download Village, it, it automatically downloaded the... Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I, I I had bought it, so it should have yeah it should have given it to you as well. Okay. Nice. Sweet. Um, yeah, I'm like thirty to forty minutes in. I just got a gun. Okay. So, so you're you're almost done with it. Then. It's it's only like two hours. Really? It's, it's like it's really that short. It's it's, it's super short. It's, 
Well, I mean, what's have you have you gotten out of the castle yet? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're you're probably about an hour and a half away then. It's it's really short. So what is it? The castle and then the house. The house. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yep. And there, then there's a there, there's a third area, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Okay. But it's not like a, a big area at all. It's just. Yeah, I, I remember you telling me that the house is <clears throat> is scarier than Beneviento in the main game. Is that is that? Scary? Uh, no, it's not as scary. Really? Because aren't there the like the things that only move when you move or when you turn away, or something like that? There is that part. I forgot about that part. That that part is freaky. That that part that part is pretty scary. Um, there there's kind of there's two sections to the house of bien viento you have like the main the main one that you're used to um and then like you go into like a weird like dreamlike state okay um where you you don't have your weapons anymore and you have to like traverse through the environment um and yeah there's like enemies that can like insta kill you but it's not like it's not like bullshit insta kill it's like more of just sneaking around and getting and getting away from them cool but yeah it's it's a pretty it's it's pretty solid as as a dlc it's not like fantastic or anything but i think it's pretty i think it's worth it's like, i think it's worth picking up it's like in par like on par with all the other resident evil dlcs like they're, they're good yeah they're, they're good they're anything. they're missable they're certainly missable like you don't need them um but it does add some some good context to to the game to the to the to the story so nice. i think i think it's worth it uh the, the only other thing i played and i'll wait to talk about it until after we finish talking about the demo but i did boot up OG Resident Evil 4. Ooh. Yeah, I a little bit of that. So okay. I'll, I'll you are just, you're a Resident Evil man this week. Gosh. I know, I know. Doing the Lord's work over here. God, yeah. So, yeah, let's let's dive into, um. so obviously we got the Capcom spotlight uh, that happened last week, and they, they shadow dropped the the demo, which we, we were um, almost 100% sure that they would, um, and they did, and we both played through it. I mean, it's pretty pretty short, just the, really just the intro of the the original game. The bell. And it's, it's gorgeous. It's, dude, I was so happy playing it. Ah oh, man. <sighs> yeah, dude. I, like everything, everything about that demo was just pure nostalgia, but like just, but just wowed. I was just, I was just wowed the entire time I was playing it. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this looks so good. Oh, they did this differently. They did this yep. differently. This. Oh, this is so much better now. Like, I'm glad they, you know, changed this part of it. Like, yeah. Oh, like, it's... Like, yeah, even from like the the very beginning, like it's it just way darker, mm -hmm. way more atmosphere. Oh my god, yeah. Way more like wooded. Like it feels like it feels like you're in the woods, whereas yeah. in the original, it's like you know we're we're in like a we're in like a backyard in North Carolina. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like the whole the whole intro part is just super atmospheric. It's gross. You you just feel like this world smells really bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The uh, the dog is just straight up dead this time. There's no saving the dog at the very beginning like there was in the other one. I have a feeling there's going to be a dog. There probably will be. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like that that section may be a little bit longer anyway. I feel like that was like a little bit of a snippet maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like in the original, it's it's a bit it's a bit longer. Yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit longer. A little bit. But yeah, you you get to the village and oh my god, is it a thousand times more just crazy and and intense more populated too there's it feels like there's more enemies yeah as soon as soon as you not, as soon as you trigger like the enemies that come after you it's like every every time i turned around there was like seven in front of my face and i was like well, i was like oh my god like what how are you supposed to beat this and then and then if you if you don't go into the house and trigger the cutscene, eventually it'll the chainsaw man will come out and he is just as terrifying, is more terrifying yeah. than he is in the original. Oh my god! Just these creepy eyeballs like protruding from Beady eyes. the the I don't know, this, the sack or whatever. It, oh, oh yeah. it's it's terrifying. Yeah, and then he'll like he'll 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 cut um, he'll cut the other villagers in half on the way to you. Yeah, like, it's a pretty gruesome dismemberment system that they have in this game. Like yeah, there there's a point where. I got hit by a village, like a, one of the, um, Gana is it, what are they called? Ganados? Ganados, yeah, something like that. Is that right? Uh, 
It's 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 almost correct if it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> got hit by one of the enemies, right? <clears throat> And Leon kind of like staggers and goes back a little bit. Yeah. The chainsaw it like comes right over my head and misses me, but it oh my God. knocks the other guy in half. And I was like, holy shit. Like this game is crazy. Were you um were you able to deflect the chainsaw? Yes. Okay. I did not able I was not able to do that. Uh, well I didn't really try. I think I had it come up for me one time and I I just I missed and got impaled. Because um, I think I only died twice in, in my run, but um and it was all it was I died all in the same spot, like where the like if you if you were to go when you're going to the village, if you go straight up to the right where the where the chainsaw guy will come through, if you don't trigger the cutscene of that long kind of little trail, like that's where I would run up to and then that's just shoot. Spot. Yeah, because I'd be shooting. There'd be like 10 guys running up toward me and then I would forget about the right side and I would get attacked. So um, what, what was your strategy in the in the original game? Did you were, so, you, were you like did you go to the house on the left? And camp out there, and then go to the next house over. Yeah. To get the shotgun. Yeah, that's that's what I would do. Um, yeah, I would always because I feel like in the in the original game, if you were to get like jump into the because I don't know if that window was already broken because you could jump into that house without triggering anything, collect ammo, and then start the fight. But as soon as you jump into that window, it triggers the enemies to come. They hear it, and I was just and they they open up that door and like five walk in. And I'm like, oh my god! And then you'd like run out. Um, that, that's the first thing I did is I, I went, I, I killed the, I killed the woman to the left. Cause that was like an easy sneak kill. I jumped through the window, triggered the, the, the mass horde of, of whatever zombies and collected whatever ammo was in there. Uh, so, like seven ran in, I freaked out. I jumped out the window again, <laughs> cut back to the left, found where the door was. And then triggered the chainsaw man and like, oh my gosh, just terrifying him, like ripping through the door. And then you run upstairs to get the shotgun. Um, and then you, then I jumped out the window and kind of stood there for a little bit and realized that, hey, this chainsaw guy has got like way more health than he does in the original. And I was like, all right, let me jump down. And then that's when I ran up the trail and he just, I, I killed a few enemies and then he was just slashing all the way through and eventually got to me the first time. So. <laughs> Yeah, I picked up that extra shotgun ammo that's that's upstairs, like if you walk all the way to the bed at the end. Uh -huh. That gave me a little bit more firepower, because I, I always try to hold out as long as I can on my roof. Yeah. And then by the time I jump down, it's pretty close to the, to the bell ring. Yeah. That's like all, kind of always been my, my strategy, even in the even in the original game. Were you um <clears throat> were you able to get into like the chest that's got like the key to it? Mm -hmm. Are you, I don't okay. know if you can in the demo. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so, but I think that's like one of those things you go back to. Okay. Oh yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, you go back to because there is a spot too where it's like clearly you need Ashley to jump up into. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's. I did, it's the, uh, did, I did the secret thing where if you remove all of your weapons and items before entering the village, if you go straight, go to the right, go up that that hill, and then um, keep going to where like you can trigger the chainsaw guy. There's there's an area that opens up and you can go down this uh, this ladder and you get the TMP and you get a bunch of ammo and when you go down there like you pretty much spend the rest of the time down there. Okay. Like when I was down there, the the chainsaw guy didn't come down, but a but a bunch of uh, a bunch of enemies did. And okay. Just mowing him down. Just mowing him down. That's awesome. But then you start with it when you do your next playthrough. Oh wow. And, continuously throughout that like you you just have the tmp which is, which is dude they cool. they do they do the best demos too man they just they just kill everything like all the all the demos they've ever done like the uh the tape demo for seven or is it the t yeah the, the video cassette tape yeah. for seven was amazing the um demo. was that a separate demo for seven there was, was two yeah hour, i think the opening hour yeah there was yeah there was two um and then i think eight was pretty pretty standard like that one there wasn't anything super fancy about that one that, that was in the castle right uh no you started out you started out in the in the village like it was like the very beginning of the game oh. but it doesn't i think as soon as you get to oh there was a separate demo yeah as soon as you PlayStation people. yeah that's right that's right so yeah they, they man yeah i gotta go back and play it then i thought i didn't realize you could continue with the tmp yeah and i think it's an upgraded tmp too Nice. So it, it does some uh, additional firepower. A little additional damage. Yeah, but like all the quality of life stuff that they've added, and then 
just being able to deflect, being able to like pretty much parry mm -hmm. enemies is, is really awesome. Being able to deflect the chainsaw, the fact that um, Leon still has his his cheesy moves with the um, with the spin spin, the spin <laughs> kick. Yeah. And then what's the one where like he pulls him over his head and goes backwards? Oh, like the suplex. The suplex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Suplex is still in there. Like all the like the yeah. super cheesy stuff from Resident Evil Four is in there, and it's somehow it's not weird. Yeah. Like, it's not like out of place. It's just ah oh, man, perfectly done. That's and awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And then, <laughs> of course, he says the line at the very end too. The yeah, hey, where's everybody going? Bingo. Oh. Dude, oh, I cannot wait, man. This. Yeah. Oh. We're, we're gonna have to include. Um, remakes in our in our game of the year discussion for sure with, oh, with dead space and resident evil and metroid so yeah it's gonna be crazy i god i cannot wait for resident evil yeah it's gonna be awesome but yeah so i, I went back and i replayed the the opening section of, of resident evil 4 yeah og on the switch <coughs> and so I, I don't know if the original one is harder or easier but it is way different because Everyone's a little bit slower. They are obviously. very, yeah, they are slower. Yeah, but you can't move when you shoot. Yeah. So it's like a give and take where, like, in, in, the, in the new version, Leon is much faster, much more versatile, much more nimble, and everyone else is faster as well. So, like, yeah. it kind of, like, ramps up the intensity beyond what was in the original. But playing through the original, it's still intense. Yeah. I mean, still, still pretty intense, but, like, the new, the new version... A remake. It just yeah. This this this, this hasn't been like. I mean, two. I think two is the standard, obviously. And I, I mean, I really like three too. But yeah, this this one could be the best, the yeah. best iteration of Resident Evil at all for all you know <clears throat> of all time. So we'll see. And so it it doesn't seem like they've cut anything because yeah. I guess this is a. Uh, it's not really a spoiler. It's not really a leak, but the achievement the achievement list leaked. Okay. And you know how, like, in all the Resident Evil games, there's an achievement for beating the game in under a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And, like, Resident Evil 2, it's, like, four hours. Resident Evil 3, it's, like, two hours. This one is eight hours. Yeah. That's that's the speedrun achievement, which means Jeez. that this game's, like, it's going to be pretty long. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was, like, 15 to 20 hours in the original version. I, yeah, I super it long. The same in this, which is, which is good. Yeah, I mean, I... That Resident Evil is one of those games I, I can replay five times. Yeah, just it's, it's so fun. But all right, um, anything else you've been playing? Or is that it? I think that's it. Okay, that's everything. <laughs> um, so we we will dive into the news here. Um, we we already kind of briefly talked about the Capcom spotlight. Um, not really much out of that. I mean, we got to look at Street Fighter Six. That looks that looks pretty cool. Um. We got a release yeah. date for. Uh, um, are you think of EXO? The, are you talking about the? No, I'm, uh, what's what's the detective game? The, the Ghost Trick. We got a, we got a release date for Ghost Trick. I can't remember what, what date it is, but sometime in the summer, I think it's in June. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got the the EXO Primal. Just looks like a live servicey, uh, another live service game. I don't know. Like they were showing off like all the battle, like the battle pass, and, like the skins and the pre order. I'm like, who is going to pre order this game? Like this, it's it's not an established franchise. You're already trying to sell us a battle pass with all these skins and stuff. Like I, I don't know, the, just the vibe of it just wasn't wasn't there for me. Yeah, I mean, it's coming to Game Pass. So I, I might. It is coming it. for Game Pass. Yeah, you're right about that. But uh, I don't know. It could be it could be fun. The the, the channel that I was watching stream in. Good vibes gaming. Yeah, they were saying that they had a that they had a great time with the demo. Okay, the, or the beta. They said it was just like stupid fun. Okay, but well, we'll see. We'll see. Any, yeah, anything else? There, there's Sunbreak, Monster Hunter Sunbreak. Yeah, uh, yeah. The DLC that's coming in April to uh, to so Xbox and consoles. yeah, PlayStation. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to have like another title update soon too, right? For for everything. So yeah, yeah well, that's I cool. Need to jump back into that too play some break but. yeah other than that there wasn't really much else um yeah um we got a release date for starfield september 6th 
if we got a release date, we got a direct coming June 11th, which I love the fact that Xbox just straight up stole the direct naming. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, did they just call it a Starfield Direct? Yeah. <laughs> well, and then their other, their previous one was a, they were, it was like a developer direct. So whatever, man, I think that name is great. Yeah, yeah, direct is a, it's a, it's a great name. Yeah, it's 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 easy to understand like what they're doing, um, but yeah, I, I think that's great. I think that's perfect timing. It's it's far off, far away enough from Zelda that I will be interested in and in diving into. Yeah, it's um, also far away from Final Fantasy sixteen, which is another yes, big yes. title coming in June, I think. Uh, people weren't happy that it got it was getting because everyone said it got delayed. Which I guess if you're going back to the showcase last year where they said everything showing off will be within a year. Sure. Sure. That, that would put it at June. Sure. It's like the latest. But the fact that Starfield wasn't in the January showcase, that already just told me that it's not going to be coming in the first six months. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're going to put it out a month after Redfall? Like, they're, they're going to want to have that game to, to breathe a little bit. So, I, I don't understand why people are so mad. Like, we're, we got a, a finite release date. It's we, It's coming. You know, if it gets delayed again, then maybe maybe talk some junk. But like, come on, Wait, there's so much other stuff to play. Like, not just Xbox games. There's so much to play yeah, if you, that I'm happy. If you own multiple <laughs> platforms, then, then you're, you're good. Yeah, if you if you own if you own a, a Switch and an Xbox, you have so much to play. There's so much. If you have a PlayStation, that's even more. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. There's a lot, man. I, I'm fine with that. I'm not like I'm not chomping at the bit for for starfield or anything but yeah i mean i'm excited for it but like i can wait yeah i need i need to see more for sure i, I definitely need to see it more because i'm not i'm not really hyped up at all for it yeah um but yeah i'm, I'm excited we, i mean we got a release date for it so what, what what else can you what else can you want <laughs> and we're getting a direct yeah and we're getting a direct we're gonna go into a deep dive into yeah the um, the next couple of stories kind of bounce off of each other, but um, Xbox announced that it won't be at the E3 show floor, which I think we kind of already knew that, right? They already said that they weren't going to be part of E3, uh, but they they will be co-streaming it, uh, the digital event, which June 11th is the Starfield Direct. So that's so I don't know if that's going to be their only thing or if they're going to have something else alongside E3's digital stuff, because they have that theater that's right beside it that they own, so they could always do something there. Um, something, something else, too. Yeah. I think so. I hope so. I, I don't think they can go, like, this uh, E3 season without... Something else, other than Starfield. Because what, what else do they have? What else, yeah, what else is coming what out? Else they, yeah, they got to show off, like, I don't know, Avowed, Forza... Um, Fable, man. I would love to see some Fable. Gears. Something. Hellblade seems like Hellblade. Help. I don't know if you if you watch like their developer update. No, what, what uh, you said it's a way out? It seems like a way out because Jeez. Um They they said like they didn't get to do their their trip to I think it's it takes place or it's like mapped after New Zealand or something. Uh, I think it's New Zealand. Okay. But they didn't get to do their, their mapping trip out to New Zealand until after COVID. Mm, okay. Which implies that they're not even, like, mapping out the geography of the game until 2022. Jeez, okay. Which, yeah, I don't know. I could see the late 2024 game. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine. Like, I'm, I'm fine with waiting. I, I would prefer just to be good and and solid and you know like the first one was was fantastic so and this one looks insanely good so it's taking such a long time it is yeah so weird like uh, that's every, every xbox studio. game every every xbox studio is just taking forever so uh, who knows um and then the the in-person event for e3 is obviously 13th to the 16th of june um where we still don't really know who's like the big platform holders that are going to be there like we don't know i mean Ubis- ubisoft said they're going to be there um but we don't really know anybody else so ubisoft is going to carry the show with just dance and they said they have a lot of stuff to show so we'll we'll see that's we'll see they should skull and bones one more time <laughs> no I, that game that game is that game is dead i think so uh, i mean and it's a live service game like nobody nobody wants that nobody like live service games are dead to me they're just i'm just done <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't played a lot of those games. 
Like they just they don't work. Like Destiny is like started it off and is the only one that's able to be really successful with it. Like like a pure life. Like I don't I don't I don't know if I would call Fortnite live service, but I mean I guess you could put it in like that category but I, I don't know I feel like that's just a battle royale with a bunch of events and skins and stuff but that's yeah that's like a multiplayer I mean that's just like a multiplayer game yeah which I mean they, they add like they add modes and you know different weapons and vehicles and stuff all the time like pre you know, even like in the middle of the season so like I guess you can consider that but also yeah it's just a multiplayer game that they update frequently yeah just kind of go off that real quick um, it seems like Suicide Squad has been internally delayed. Yeah. To I don't actually don't know if it was publicly delayed or not, but a lot of like reports are stating that this game's been delayed. Yeah, it shouldn't come out. It looks like shit. It looks horrible. <laughs> yeah, it looks. It looks like a generic shooter that they that they pasted some. Like you have you have outside of, outside of uh, Deadshot, you have all these characters that are melee based brawler characters and they all freaking shoot machine guns and shotguns like how boring is that how and then is that? and then like all like like all the and I, I love the color i love the color purple but like all the purple-esque enemies and like they have these specific spots like on the tanks where you gotta shoot it just looks horrible it looks like avengers it looks looks like gotham knights looks like gotham knights it looks terrible i am just i'm kind of ashamed of rocksteady and of, of coming from like a great trilogy of Batman uh, and this is in the same universe and like and Batman was I, I thought the third one had its its issues like but the first two were fantastic and, and Arkham Asylum is one of the best Metroidvania games like of all time it's it's so good um, yeah I, I would feel you know I don't like to bash the developer or nothing but I would feel ashamed if I worked there and this is what I put out of eight years Eight years yeah. of development, and this is what you guys give us: is this garbage live service game that nobody wants. Like, nobody. Was there, any point, was there any point where they where they read the room and said, "Hey, like, you know, it's it's 2020, yeah. and Avenger, Avengers isn't well received. Maybe we should pivot. Yeah, Maybe we shouldn't <laughs> go that route." But they just buckled down, and and it seems like that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, and like you said, like tone deaf, like where we're coming off like four or five, six studios shutting down these live service games because nobody wants them. And and here they are trying to put out this seventy dollar live service. I'm sure it's gonna be seventy seventy dollar live service game. That's that's garbage. No shot. Uh, let's no let's take shot. one more quick break, Nick, and then we'll uh we'll wrap it up. All right, and we are back. Nick, do you want to read the uh, the last story? <clears throat> This is where everyone thought we were going to hear a lot about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but apparently uh, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be skipping PAX East, which takes place on March 23rd to the 26th. Yeah. So no, no plans to show off any, any footage of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. And, you know, at that point, which, I mean, it's just a few weeks away, right? It's just, uh, yeah. yeah, 10 days away. But... At that point, it'll pretty much be a month and a half until uh, Tears of the Kingdom launches. It's crazy. If we're less than two months at, at this point, it's like 60 days exactly, I think. 60 or 59 days. <clears throat> uh, and we like we know next to nothing. And I, I have to think that's very intentional. I think there's a lot being hidden. There a lot, or just a lot that's not being shown off in this game. Yeah. And I don't know how much they're going to show us before it launches i mean what do you what do you think they're gonna do you think they're gonna have a direct or anything like that i i don't know like i i feel like if they're gonna have a direct right now like because a lot of people are speculating april is gonna be the direct um but we're you know if there's this supposed zelda switch where where does that get launched you know where, where does that launch at because typically right. those switches launch about 30 days prior to the game coming out so you know, unless we have a direct like tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday or this week, I don't know. But then, but then, why wouldn't it be at PAX? You know, I have a demo of it at PAX. So, what are they going to show at PAX? Like Pikmin? Uh, they said it was going to uh, focus on competitive games. So soon? Soon. Smash Brothers. I don't know if they're like planning on showing off anything new. I would be. I, I would be very irritated if I was like. 
a media person and I booked PAX tickets because Nintendo announced that they were going to be at PAX and then just recently said that Zelda's not going to be there. So, like, all those people that booked those probably non-refundable tickets because they assumed Zelda was going to be there and all of a sudden it's not. Uh, I would be, I mean, obviously PAX is going to be fun regardless because, I mean, we, we play everything. So, you know, Zelda's not the end-all be-all, but still, if, like, that's your main bread and butter... Um, you know, if you're a Nintendo YouTuber or something and like you, you book this stuff like, yeah, I'd be kind of irritated. But I don't know, man, like they, they could just not do a direct at all and just they, and just be fine and be fine. Like, I I want to see more just because I'm intrigued by Zelda and I, and I love it and I want to see a lot of it. But also, like, how crazy would it be if they didn't show us anything and just let it launch on the 12th? And that was it. Like, that would be kind I of insane. Like. If if they did that, they'd have to say something. Or they would. I, I think they would say something of like, "Hey, there's a lot to this game. There's a lot more than we've shown you so far. We want that magic to be preserved until when the game launches. And because of that, <laughs> we're not going to show much more of yeah of Zelda. Which hey, I mean, like, not to to bring up Elden Ring every single podcast, but. That was the kind of the beauty of Elden Ring is like I I know they they showed a lot of that game off, but I really didn't watch a lot because I just didn't want to be spoiled, per se, or necessarily. Um, And I think like this could be obviously Breath of the Wild was had a lot of moments like Elden Ring have, but we haven't really had that game since last year with Elden Ring where everybody's exploring this somewhat brand new world um with with tears of the kingdom we're going back to hyrule but um you know we'll, we're exploring all these these new areas these new caves you know you, one person goes off in one direction one person goes off the other hey i explore yeah. Yeah, i saw this and I, th- it's, I think it's gonna be a great a great moment in gaming a great zeitgeist game it's gonna be all over tiktok all over social media it's gonna be crazy uh i can't wait for it it's gonna be a lot of fun and and if I don't I don't I don't need to see anything else. I, I'm good, but also I want to see some more stuff. <laughs> maybe maybe that's like maybe 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 Nintendo has their finger on the pulse and maybe. they looked at what happened with Elden Ring and they're like, hey, like this game got a lot more publicity because people were discovering things yeah. in real time. And TikTok wasn't around when when Breath of the Wild launched. So yeah, well, it might not be around when yeah, that Breath is true. Kingdom launches, but. <laughs> But that that short form media that yeah. gets people hyped up. It's yeah, like, it's a lot different than it was in 2017. Exactly. Yeah, uh, back in 2017, it was just YouTube videos. You know, I, this is how you find this. But and it was TikTok and Elden Ring. You know, it's like, oh, let's. I, let me. We're here on this map. Let me uh, fast forward like 30 seconds, and oh, I found this awesome piece of armor. Look how cool it is. And look at my, look at my uh, 30 second. Um, you know, wardrobe of Elden yeah. Ring. I mean, dude, we did. Uh, we did. Ring. Yeah, you know, we need we just need it to come full circle and we need that again. And we need some sort of middle of the night song to, to coincide with, with Zelda. Like Zelda needs its own like mainstream uh, pop song. It does. I can't wait, man. Oh, I can't wait. But yeah, I don't know. To go back to your question, I don't I don't know where they I don't know where they do it at. Like maybe I, maybe April, like people are are mixed stating and and i think that's probably where it's going to happen um since it's not going to be at pax but then yeah there lies the question of the switch like when would it and it may not be real who knows but i don't know yeah if if, if it's not real i think april makes sense because uh it's it's not a very crowded month like they only yeah. have advanced wars yeah <laughs> so th- there, there's not too much else to focus on like marketing wise yeah and, and that game's you know it's gonna it's gonna sell what it's gonna sell at this point. As exactly. Advanced Wars is it's, yeah. It's already been marketed to a degree. Um, I just want them to reopen pre-orders on the Kledger's edition. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did pre-order it digitally today, though. I I got it on Amazon. Sure. Um, which I will probably switch to Best Buy because Amazon is uh, not great with their you, pre-order stuff. Are you gonna do pickup? Or are you shipping it? I'm I'm gonna do well. I think my Best Buy only does pick up. I don't I don't think they do shipping where where I'm at. Um, but I want to possibly go to the midnight release too, and be and be that midnight release boy and, and see what happens. Um, 
But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I can muster up that anymore. But yeah. I mean, when you when you have a digital leak, you can do the midnight release from your from your bed. That is true. That is very true. Yeah, but we'll see. It's not the same. Really it's not the same, and I haven't been to one since since Breath of the Wild. So again, full circle. We'll we'll see what happens with that. But. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the show, everyone. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed our uh, long discussion tonight with a lot of a lot of games, a lot of games, Last of Us. It's been it's been it's been great. Um, yeah, I just can't wait for Resident Evil Four, man. Yeah, uh, share your thoughts on that. Uh, if anyone's played it, share your thoughts with us on that on that demo. Yeah, please do. It's and if you haven't played it, download it. It's it's amazing. Um, Nick, where can they uh, follow us on our uh, our social stuff? on Twitter at gaming WT Bros. We're tweeting over there. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at gaming with the Bros Cast, and you can email us any questions at gaming with the Bros at yahoo dot com. Dot c o m. Yep. Dot c o m. All right, guys. Well, we will see y'all next um, next Monday. We'll. We'll talk about that uh, that Zelda Direct that's going to happen on Wednesday. And... Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> announced, announced tomorrow morning at, at 10 a.m. Oh, God. On Wednesday. There's no way. I hate, I hate yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> Maybe, though. I mean, there's always... There's... I'm feeling a little tingly, yeah. Nate. A little, a little tingly? Little... No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm just feeling the Resident Evil vibes right now. That's all I need. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. So we'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.